So in the majority of cases of indoor spreading that occur over the space of hours or even a few days, the Wells-Riley model of slow incubation, where the number of infectors is held constant at the initial value, is a reasonable approximation. For COVID-19, the incubation period is estimated to be on the order of several days, with, a, for example, a number of 5.5 days is often quoted as uh, an estimated mean incubation period. On the other hand, in some cases, there are spreading events that involve people interacting over much longer periods of time than that. A famous example, which is a little bit longer than the time of incubation, is the case of the Diamond Princess cruise ship, which uh, was quarantined in uh, Yokohama Port, Japan uh, in early 2020, when it was detected that there were a number of cases on board. The exact number wasn't known because they hadn't tested the entire uh, population, but there were several cases. And so they decided to quarantine the ship uh, for 12 days. And if you look at the number of infections versus time, once they started testing and felt they had a good uh, sense of the, of the numbers, you can see that it rose from value, which uh, we may estimate to be on the order of 20 uh, possible cases initially. And it rises, but in a very nonlinear fashion. In fact, it starts to accelerate and go steeper and steeper. Now recall, the Wells-Riley model cannot possibly predict this behavior because if you have a fixed number of infectors, then at first you have a certain rate of transmission, but it always has to slow down because if there's no new infectors, the same infectors are running out of susceptible people to infect. The number of susceptibles is going down, and so you kind of slowly saturate until eventually you've infected everybody. When it's just one person or a fixed number of people who are basically uh, you know, transmitting at a constant rate of infection quanta uh, to, to everybody else. But that's not what happened. In fact, it's a very steep rise. It went just in the last few days, it jumped by several hundred people. And in fact, if they hadn't stopped the quarantine in 12 days, there were 4,000 people on that ship. I think 3,711, I'll just mention, I think that was the number. Uh, so way higher, and you see how this is accelerating. If they had gone with the quarantine a couple more days, they might have had thousands of people infected. Uh, so in fact, this is an interesting warning for quarantines that just cooping up some people for 14 days doesn't make everybody safe. If many of those people are susceptible and are not yet infected, they can become infected. And many interesting things about this incident is that the people were not in direct contact, obviously. Thousands of people were not six feet apart from each other. They were often in different rooms, different floors of the ship, and yet very large numbers uh, became infected in a short time. So the important thing uh, I'd like to emphasize now, coming back to our SEI model, is that this sort of nonlinear increase can only be explained if you have some accelerated spreading due to new infected people. And it makes sense after about five days, and we also don't know when people got infected. So those initial infected people may have been infected five days earlier. So there may have been already an increase in the number of infected people already at time equals zero of the quarantine. And so we should now account also for the exposed people. Those are people that may not be showing symptoms yet, but have been exposed enough that they can then pass it on. And so the rate of an exposed person becoming an infectious person is alpha, and inverse of alpha is that 5.5 days, so that's the uh, incubation time. And this might be something like 5.5 days uh, for COVID-19, but of course it can vary, um, but it's roughly on that order. And so it makes sense to look at the diamond, diamond princess and consider what would be the effect of accounting for in incubation. So these are nonlinear equations that don't uh, have a simple solution to the full model. But in the same way, the Wells-Riley model is the limit of slow incubation, where basically E stays zero and basically you convert very, uh, you, you basically you only have infected people. Now we can uh, consider the opposite limit of fast incubation. So let's consider the opposite limit of fast incubation. And this would be alpha t much greater than 1. So basically, we want to make sure that the t is much bigger than the incubation time. And as I said, the incubation time doesn't necessarily start at time 0. The infected people in this case may have already been infected five days earlier. In fact, the cruise ship had been going for actually weeks before that. So no one knows exactly when the infection 
uh, began. So it may be even likely that that was happening. So let's consider the, the fast incubation limit. So what this then tells us is that now the exposed portion is roughly zero. So if alpha is very quick, then you pretty much quickly go through the exposed and you end up immediately being infected. And so this is actually a much simpler model where the number of susceptibles is just n minus i. So there's no exposed uh, compartment anymore. Uh, so the Wells-Riley model in some sense is the SE model where there are only exposed people and susceptible, but the number of infectors doesn't change. This is really the SI model where we don't worry about the exposed compartment, okay? So the equation we want to solve then, if we realize that S is our N minus I, is that dS dt is minus beta of t Si. So that's the same equation I wrote down earlier. But now let's substitute and let's derive an equation for the number of infected. So that will be uh, from here, uh, di dt uh, will be uh, beta of t times i, and then s is n minus i. Uh, because again, if, the, uh, if, the, if we go straight through the exposed fraction, uh, then basically this rate of losing susceptibles is equal to uh, the rate of creating uh, new infected people. Again, because n is fixed. The number of people is fixed, so ds dt is minus di dt. So this is the equation now that we can solve for this limit of the model. And fortunately, this is a simple equation to solve. It's a first order uh, separable differential equation. So we can write this as di over i times n minus i is equal to beta of t dt. On this side, I can write this as I can factor out a 1 over n and write this as 1 over i plus 1 over n minus i. So when I combine these two, I get i, n minus i in the denominator. and the numerator, I get n minus i plus i. So I just get n, but then it divides by that n. So I do come back to what I started with, uh, and this times uh, di. And so now I can integrate both sides of this equation. Take into account the, the initial condition is that at t equals 0, the number of factors is i0. So basically, I can integrate by going from 0 to time t. And on this side, in terms of the infectors, I'm going from i0 to the current number of infectors i. OK, so now we're ready to integrate this equation. So let's multiply the n to the other side uh, and do the integral. So basically, the integral of 1 over i is log i. So we have log i minus log of n minus i. And that's because there's a minus i uh, there, so that leads to a minus sign out front. On the other side, if I multiply through by n, I have n integral from 0 to t of beta of t dt plus a constant of integration. The boundary condition that I need is that i of 0 is i0. So at t equals 0, this term vanishes. And this expression must be evaluated with i equal to i0. So therefore, there must be, on this side of the equation, some constants log of i0 minus log of n minus i0. So now we satisfy the boundary condition, or the initial condition at t equals 0. Now, I can also write this in terms of the uh, quanta emission rate for the initial infectors, which we defined earlier. So for the Wells-Riley model, we talked about writing q of t is the number of quanta emitted by the initial infectors. So if we just define it as i0 times the integral over time of beta of t dt, this is the sort of uh, uh, infection quanta emitted uh, by the uh, i0 initial infectors. So if we take that he here, we can uh, express the solution in a somewhat different way. If I take an exponential of both sides, the difference of two logs is the log of the ratio. And when I exponentiate, I get rid of the log. So this side turns into i over n minus i. And the other side, we have from the similar expression, i0 over n minus i0, but times now the exponential of 
Well, if we want to express it in terms of q0, it would be um, n, and then this uh, d beta dt is, is, has a 1 over i0 q of t. So this is the solution um, in this case. Now, if we look at um, early times, and so uh, then that would be sort of less than the incubation time. So if basically our alpha t is much less uh, than 1, so not much incubation has occurred, and basically during that time, I is approximately still equal to I0, so that would be kind of in the early, early stages here of this dynamics. Uh, then we could write that I of T is, um, well, uh, fr from this we could write it as uh, N minus I0, and then I0 uh, times the time integral of beta. Or, or n, n minus i0 times q, or it's the number of susceptibles times q of t. So this is um, a result that can come you know, from <clears throat> directly from analyzing this expression. Um, we can also see it um, here, that if i is not changing, then we have i n minus i, and uh, we can uh, also see this expression here where we just integrate both sides in time to get to this equation here. So it's basically the same same as the Wells-Riley in early time. And that's an interesting observation, which is that there is a universal um, sort of small transmission limit in both of these, both limits of this model. And what that is, if we take this um, sort of, um, at least for the S, this SEI model, if we write how many exposed plus infected relative to the initial number of infectors, okay? So that is telling us sort of how many transmissions there are either to make someone exposed or to make them infectious uh, from the initial number of infectors. Um, that at early times, we get this uh, same result that we had before, uh, because we got the same thing for the Wells-Riley model for E, here it's for I, and we find that this is this, what we call Rn, the indoor uh, transmission number, which is the initial number of susceptibles times the number of quanta uh, transferred, and in the case where if S0 were equal to N minus 1 and I0 were equal to 1, this would be N minus 1 integral over t of beta dt, just that would be that, that case that we talked about uh, before for the indoor transmission number. Uh, but more generally, it would, it would look like this. So the idea is that early times, before many transmissions have happened, it really doesn't matter what's the details of the model in terms of the nonlinear response. So even if after a longer amount of time, more and more people get infected, the initial moments are kind of always universal and are really just governed by this transmission rate beta and the number of susceptible people and number of infectious people initially in the room. So it's kind of independent of all these details here. And so then to kind of summarize uh, that picture, uh, we could plot uh, versus time here. Uh, what happens in terms of the, uh, so, so, so we, have, we have a rate of transmission where if I look at the number of, um, the total number of exposed plus infected people, okay, and then here's the total number of people in the room N. So in the Wells-Riley model, there is no expo there's everyone's exposed, but nobody becomes infectious. And we know that we get this kind of exponential relaxation as we eventually run out of susceptible people. And the time scale for that is beta inverse, okay? And that that's gives you the transmission time for just a fixed number of infectors to slowly infect everybody else. But in the case like we described here, where we have some nonlinear acceleration, then it has to start out the same. That's what I'm trying to say here, is the initial transmission rate doesn't matter if there's an incubation rate until you reach the incubation time. So there's kind of an alpha inverse here, which is the incubation time. 
This one here is the transmission time. And at this time scale, you start to get an exponential increase until it, it, sat, it, it saturates, you know, uh, basically once all the transmission has occurred because now there's more and more infectious people. And so this is the uh, fast incubation and slow incubation. And this one is the Wells-Riley model, which is widely used. But if you're fitting spreading data where there may actually be some uh, incubation going on and also potentially removal, we could have uh, to add another equation for the removal of people. We need to be careful in how we fit data in order to extract information about the transmission rate, which is what we're interested in when we're trying to interpret the data. So, um, so the uh, maybe an important conclusion from this is that infection quanta, this notion or the infection quantum, I guess you could say, one of them, which is a quantity that was introduced by Wells, really based on this Wells-Riley model, is basically thinking of this exponential relaxation and saying when, you know, let's say 63% of people become infected, that's what you say is one infection quantum has been transmitted to, to each of those people. Uh, then really, it's better defined, um, it, I'll just write here, it's defined by the transmission rate um, and not by the number of people that actually get infected. So if you look at some data like the Diamond Princess or other data that we're going to look at later, you are seeing spreading happening, and there could be lots of contributions to the number of people that actually get sick. For example, there could be incubation going on. So what's sometimes called the secondary attack rate is E plus I divided by S0. Uh, so the secondary attack rate is sort of the fraction of people that are susceptible that got infected. And the Wells-Riley would say when that's 63%, then you know you've sort of transmitted a quantum to each of those people. Uh, whereas, as we see in the case of the fast incubation model, that's not how you would interpret that data. But on the other hand, beta is well-defined. It's you're just, each person is transferring quanta at a certain rate and has the potential to infect other people. Now, I don't want to over state the relevance of this model for a particular case like the Diamond Princess cruise ship. We'll come back to this later. Um, but just simply to illustrate that it has this kind of nonlinear feature, which is suggestive of incubation occurring and an increase in the number of infected people. And just to point out uh, that this sort of simple modeling leads us to kind of a universal expression for the initial transmission from the initial infectors for each of them to transfer to sort of you know one other uh, which is this indoor uh, reproductive number, uh, and that's really what's valid at the early times here. And that's where we have kind of a universal behavior. And that's useful in formulating safety guidelines, which we will do next.